Protect yourself from ticks where you work. This presentation was developed by the Vector-Borne Disease Section at the California Department of Public Health. During this presentation, you will learn how to identify ticks, when ticks are most likely to bite, the risks and prevention of tick bites, and how to remove a tick. Ticks are small, spider-like creatures that take blood meals from animals. The two main families of ticks are exoded, called hard ticks, and are gassed, called soft ticks. Both hard and soft ticks may bite humans. Hard ticks have a hard outer body, and when they attach to a host, they feed for days at a time. They are found in naturally vegetated areas such as along trails and mixed hardwood forests. Soft ticks have a soft outer body, and when they attach to a host, they feed quickly, in minutes. Soft ticks are usually found in rodent nests and when rodents build nests in rustic cabins. The focus of this presentation will be tick bite prevention of bites from exoded or hard ticks. This presentation will focus on the types of hard ticks that are found in natural areas such as brush, forest, trails, roadsides, and campgrounds. Here are some pictures of common human biting ticks in California and the diseases they spread. In each picture, the male tick is on the left and the female is on the right. The western black-legged tick, Exodes pacificus, is a vector for Lyme disease and anaplasmosis. The Pacific Coast tick, Dermacenter occidentalis, is likely the vector of Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the spotted fever group of diseases, and tularemia. The American dog tick, Dermacenter variabilis, is likely a vector of Rocky Mountain spotted fever and tularemia. In California, you are most likely to see adult ticks in the fall and winter. The small immature nymphal ticks are common in the spring and summer. Nymphs are the primary vector of Lyme disease to people. In this picture of ticks on a finger, the nymphal tick is on the far left next to an adult male, middle, and adult female, right, western black-legged tick. You can appreciate how small is the nymphal tick. In the tick life cycle, each life stage of the tick attaches to an animal to take one blood meal before maturing to the next stage. Larvae and nymphs feed on small animals such as rodents, lizards, or birds. Adults prefer larger animals such as deer. On the left is a picture of a lizard with nymphal and larval ticks attached and taking a blood meal in the small holes on either side of the head. There are at least eight immature ticks attached to this lizard. On the right is a picture of an adult tick crawling in the fur of a dog looking for a place to attach and feed. Here is a typical tick life cycle. After the female tick lays eggs, they hatch into tiny larvae. The larva takes a blood meal from a bird, rodent, or lizard and molts into a nymph. The nymph will obtain a blood meal from any number of hosts, including humans, prior to molting into the adult stage. The adult tick will commonly bite deer and can also bite humans. As accidental hosts, humans risk contracting disease from both the nymphal and adult stage. In some areas of California, the bite from a nymphal tick can pose a greater risk of infection to humans because the nymphal tick is so tiny that it is hard to detect and remove. And also, nymphs are more likely to be infected than adult ticks. The most common tick-borne disease in California is Lyme disease. After Lyme disease, the most common tick-borne diseases are the spotted fever group Rickettsiae, such as Rocky Mountain spotted fever, followed by diseases caused by bacteria, including anaplasmosis and tularemia. Babesiosis, caused by a parasite, is a rare disease in California. What types of workers are at risk for tick bites? If your job involves working outdoors where ticks are found, in grassy, brushy areas, mixed hardwood forest, you may be at risk for tick bites and the diseases ticks carry.
At-risk occupations include those that place workers outside, such as in parks, forests, gardens, farms, and along roadsides. Occupations such as construction worker, firefighter, park ranger, trail constructor, and utility line worker are at risk for tick bites. There are three times to think about protecting yourself from tick bites before you leave for work, during work, and after work. Before you leave for work, wear the right gear. Wear light colored clothing to make it easier to see ticks. Wear long sleeves and pants and tuck your shirt in to keep ticks from crawling onto your skin. Before you enter areas where ticks may be found, apply an EPA registered tick repellent that contains greater than 20% DEET or picaridin. These formulations are the most effective against ticks. It is also suggested to apply or wear clothing that has already been treated with the insecticide permethrin. Always follow the label directions. Another way to use repellents is to spray products with DEET onto clothing, taking care to follow the label directions. Clothing can be treated with a permethrin-containing product, which kills ticks when they come in contact with the product. Permethrin-treated clothing is available commercially. Permethrin does not affect the flammability of fire clothing. Remember to always follow label directions carefully. For Nomex or flame-resistant clothing, you can apply permethrin without destroying the clothing's flame resistance. DEET and picaridin, however, should not be applied to Nomex clothing as this decreases Nomex flame resistance. DEET applied to skin does not interfere with Nomex clothing and is effective at repelling ticks. Remember to always follow label directions carefully. While you are in tick habitat, remember that ticks lurk in many places. Ticks may find you when you sit on fallen logs, lean against tree trunks, sit at wooden picnic tables, and walk through or sit in bushy, grassy areas. During your work when you're in areas where ticks are found, it is important to check yourself for ticks. Timing is everything. Check yourself and others often for ticks so you can find and remove them before they attach to skin. If you find a tick on you or a coworker, remove it promptly by brushing it off. It is fine to use your fingers to remove a tick or tweezers if available. It is especially important to check for ticks after sitting in grass or on logs or leaning against a tree trunk. When out in the field overnight or for several days, there are extra steps to take to protect yourself from tick bites. Apply tick repellent, DEET, daily to skin and non-Nomex clothing and at intervals as suggested on the label if out for many hours or days. Permethrin should be applied to sleeping bags, tents, and bed netting. One application of permethrin to these materials can last up to six weeks. When out in the field for one night or for several days, it is especially important to be vigilant about checking yourself and your coworkers often for ticks. Never apply permethrin directly to the skin. After work or when you return from tick habitat, wash clothing and shower soon after returning from a tick infested area. Check yourself for ticks two to three days after returning from tick habitat. Be sure to check well at the hairline, behind the knees, and in the groin area. Ticks can be very tiny. Look for new freckles. If you find a tick on you, remove it promptly. The sooner you remove a tick, the lower the risk of contracting a tick-borne disease. What happens if you find a tick attached to your skin? Reverse barbs on the mouth parts in some ticks keep them hanging on tight. This makes removing ticks difficult. Ticks can stay attached for days unless you remove them. 
Nymphal ticks can stay attached in feeding for three to four days, and adult ticks stay attached in feeding for five to seven days. The proper way to remove a tick is to pull it directly out with tweezers. First, clean the area around the tick with soap and water or antiseptic. Next, grasp the tick close to the skin with tweezers. This will help you get a clean removal. Using a gentle straight up motion, pull the tick slowly upwards. Do not twist or jerk while pulling. After you have removed the tick, apply an antiseptic to the bite area and wash your hands with soap and water. Occasionally, the embedded mouth parts break off and stay in the skin. If this happens, clean the wound and apply antibiotic ointment. See your healthcare provider if you are concerned. After removing the tick, it can be saved for identification by placing it in a container with alcohol and bringing it to your local vector control agency or health department. Documentation of a tick bite while on the job should be discussed with your supervisor. Notify your supervisor and see your doctor if you are concerned about any unusual symptoms that occur within 30 days of a tick bite. Tell your doctor that you were in an area where ticks were found. If you know the type of tick removed from your person, give your doctor this information also. What should you look for after a tick bite? After a tick bite, you may experience itching and painful redness less than 24 hours after being bitten, as shown in this picture. This reaction may be a local allergic reaction to the tick's saliva. If you experience flu-like symptoms two days to several weeks after being bitten by a tick, it may be related to a tick-borne disease. Remember that tick-borne diseases can be serious if not treated. For more information about ticks and tick-borne diseases, please visit the California Department of Public Health website. In addition, here are links to specific resources about tick bite prevention in outdoor workers and repellents.